You may have noticed that Voodoo 3 cars for the PCI interface have a component, apart from the actual 3DFX chip, that requires a heatsink. In a recent video I revived a Voodoo 3 2000 PCI, which also has this voltage regulator, but it was missing the heatsink for the same. At that time I ordered replacement heatsinks, which finally arrived, but to my surprise they feel lighter, thinner and less capable to divert and distribute heat. In today's video we are going to test if those heatsinks are a suitable replacement for the voltage regulator of Voodoo 3 cards for the PCI interface and how they compare to the original heatsink. In a few follow up videos we will explore more options if and how we can improve the thermal characteristics of this Voodoo 3 2000 PCI. This voltage regulator is responsible to deliver constant 3.3 volts. The output voltage is then used to power other components on the board, including, after another round of voltage regulation, the 3DFX chip. Anyone who owned a Voodoo 3 may remember how hot they got, especially when they weren't upgraded with an aftermarket fan. After only a few minutes one could feel the heat radiating from within the case. If you blamed the 3DFX graphics chip, you were only partially right. This voltage regulator did its part to contribute a significant portion towards the overall heat generation. If you accidentally were to touch the heatsink for a second or so, you got burnt. Believe me when I tell you that this voltage regulator gets extremely hot. But how hot exactly? Right on time, Pergear sent a new thermal camera my way, the Infiray P2 Pro, which I did not pay for by the way. All thermal video material you will see in this video are taken with this camera, to which you will find affiliate links in the video description. I was told that during the upcoming Prime Day 2023 you will be able to get a limited time 50 US dollar discount for this camera. More about the camera to come throughout and at the end of this video. If you watched the video where I was able to revive another Voodoo 3 2000 PCI, you may remember that I had to borrow the heatsink of the voltage regulator from this card. Today we will put the heatsink back and compare the performance of the original heatsink to one of the new ones. We will also test if there is a difference if we apply thermal paste between the voltage regulator, the heatsink and the graphic card board. You may ask why I did not try to run the regulator without a heatsink to see how hot it gets and the answer is simple. The engineers probably have put the heatsink there for good reason. You will see in a moment that the heatsink is absolutely required. It is not only the heatsink that diverts heat from this regulator. With the screw the heatsink is screwed to the PCB, which also helps to take some heat away. So let's make sure to run this card as intended by the designers, for now. With the heatsink in place we can fire up a test system and measure how hot the regulator gets. Initially I just boot into windows and remain on the desktop, but even without any significant load on the 3D unit of the card. I was very surprised to see temperatures close to 90 degrees on this regulator. And this is with the original heatsink. Now I have doubts that the replacement heatsinks will stand a chance cooling down this component sufficiently. The heatsink of the 3DFX chip heats up to around 65 degrees. All this heat is generated without running any 3D application. I am sure temperatures would be much worse when this card is crammed into a tiny case without airflow. The back of the card is heating up as well. And although the spot where the 3DFX chip is mounted is hotter than the place where the regulator sits, the difference in temperature is just by a few degrees. We get around 63 degrees on the main graphics chip, while the spot where the regulator is placed, the PCB heats up to around 60 degrees. Playing Unreal Tournament for a couple of minutes drives both temperatures up. Not significantly, but they do rise. The regulator is now sitting at 97 degrees, while the heatsink on the 3DFX chip reaches 68 degrees. So let's have a look what the replacements can do. Away with the original heatsink and in with a new one, still no thermal paste. Knowing the temperature of the regulator in combination with the original heatsink, my confidence in the replacements is fairly low. Just to be sure I monitored the temperature from the moment I switched on the system. And to my surprise, I did not notice much of a difference between the original and the replacement heatsink. At least not yet. While the component heats up, let me show you the optional macro lens that can be purchased in a bundle with the Infiray P2 Pro camera. With the macro lens you can get much closer to objects you want to record. The lens snaps on the camera and is held in place via a magnet, which is strong enough to keep the entire cover in place, but not too strong so it's difficult to remove. 
I already started Unreal Tournament and want to see what temperatures we get with this, in my opinion, weaker heatsink. Let's remove the macro lens again and continue to monitor the temperature. It looks like we get the same temperatures under load. On the back of the card, the 3DFX chip is unchanged at 65 degrees. The voltage regulator spot on this side is a little bit hotter at around 62 degrees. At a temperature of 98 degrees, I stopped the test because I felt it wanted to heat up a couple of degrees more. The original heatsink leveled out at 97 degrees. So I have a feeling that the replacement heatsinks are a bit weaker, but surprisingly not by much. Now it is time to apply some thermal paste and see if it makes a difference. And if it does, by how much. We use thermal paste between CPUs, GPUs and their respective coolers to improve heat transfer. Therefore thermal paste should make a difference to keep this voltage regulator a little bit cooler. Thermal paste is now applied to both sides of the heatsink. This should help transfer heat from the voltage regulator to the heatsink and finally to the board. I recorded the entire heat up process from the moment I powered on the system. Initially the regulator heats up quickly, but the closer we get to the final temperature the heat increase slows down significantly. I am already running Unreal Tournament in the background. It is looping through the intro scene. It looks like we are leveling at a temperature of 78 to 80 degrees with a replacement heatsink plus thermal paste. This is in the range of 15 to 20 degrees cooler than with the original heatsink without thermal paste. To make sure that we have reached peak temperature I played one match of Unreal Tournament, which usually takes around 5 minutes. But the temperature remained at 80 degrees. Then I played another match and we briefly touched 81 degrees. I think it's safe to say that we have reached the maximum temperature of this regulator. By applying thermal paste, this voltage regulator is now 15 to 20 degrees cooler than with the original heatsink that is just screwed to the board, without thermal paste. The heatsink of the 3DFX chip reached almost 70 degrees during gameplay, and so does the back of the card. The spot where the voltage regulator sits reaches almost 65 degrees. Ok, let's have a look at the final test. The original heatsink with thermal paste. This will be the final configuration how I will leave this card after today's project. However, I am pleasantly surprised that the replacement heatsink did perform quite well and they would be an adequate replacement when used with thermal paste over the original heatsink. The thermal camera is again pointed at the voltage regulator from the moment I power on the system until I complete one round of Unreal Tournament. While the card is heating up, let me tell you another detail about the Infiray P2 Pro thermal camera. It does not have an internal battery. Power is taken from the phone's charging port, which in my opinion is a more convenient option compared to other models. So you don't need to worry about charging your Infiray P2 Pro thermal camera before you use it. After about 6 minutes since power on, we have reached a temperature of 78 degrees. At this level, the temperature remains stable. And again, around 20 degrees cooler compared to the original heatsink without thermal paste. As mentioned before, this is going to be the state I will keep this card in. We have managed to reduce the temperature of the voltage regulator by 20 degrees. But this won't be the only improvement we will make to this card. I am looking forward to the next videos because we will try to reduce the heat output of the main graphics chip. The obvious answer is to replace the heatsink, which we will do, but not for the next video. I don't want to say more and spoil the fun, so you should subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss those upcoming videos. In the next two videos I will continue to utilize the Infiray P2 Pro thermal camera. Throughout this video I was pleasantly surprised how well this tiny camera performed. Here you can see a size comparison between the FLIR 1 Pro and the Infiray P2 Pro, which claims to be the world's smallest thermal camera. The camera also comes with its own mobile application, with a clean and intuitive layout. You can select between different color palettes, from black and white to all kinds of color graded temperature maps. The application has a variety of profiles for different materials. Selecting the correct profile may help the camera predict the temperature more accurately. I haven't tested this myself, but it does look like a nice feature. You can also specify the distance of objects you are recording. The camera will then compensate for the larger distance and adjust the temperature reading accordingly. There are a lot more features of this camera and the application which I will explore in upcoming videos. However, there are two points which I really like about the Infiray P2 Pro over the FLIR 1 Pro. First, 
The Infure P2 Pro does not have a built-in battery. It utilizes the phone charging port as a power source. This is great if you do not want to have another device that requires charging. The Infure P2 Pro is always ready as long as your phone is charged. And you don't have to worry about a degrading battery in the long run. The second feature, or better an option, is that you can disable the watermark. This is not possible on the Fleur 1 Pro. With a flip of a switch, you can disable the watermark on the Infure P2 Pro. So, if you're looking for a thermal camera, I suggest to check out the Infure P2 Pro, especially now for the upcoming Prime Day, which gives you 50 US dollars off the original price. If you require more technical details, go check out Pear Gear's website, which is a distributor of photo and filmmaking gear, as well as the official distributor of Infure. If you purchase the camera using my affiliate links in the video description, I will get a small commission from Pear Gear, which won't cost you anything extra. As I said, I will be using this camera in the upcoming videos. I am aiming to reduce the temperature of the 3DFX chip by 5 to 10 degrees. Let's see if I will be successful in doing so. If you don't want to miss this, then again, please subscribe to my channel. Also don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed today's content. And finally, a sincere thank you to all my incredible Patreons for your invaluable support, which helps this channel thrive and grow. Your contributions are deeply appreciated. And with this, we have reached the end of this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.